America's ships deliver the goods. Our merchant fleet is a vital industry in war or peace, which affects the lives of each of us in some way. Today's modern ocean-going ships are among the largest and most complex machines on Earth. They are self-contained worlds. They must move cargo and passengers across distant seas and safely return. They are the very heart of our maritime industry. Each year, these automated wonders become more complicated and more sophisticated. Their very operation becomes more challenging. Highly trained specialists known as marine engineers operate and maintain the complex mechanical systems and devices which make it possible for a ship to perform its vital tasks. In this and associated fields, the vitality of this country's entire maritime industry depends on our ability to fill existing and future career vacancies with the highest caliber of men. The minute you miss the steam, you want the rotor to start turning, prevent it from warping, overheating, and so forth. John Garofalo, cadet engineer, finally getting to answer the telegraph and controlling the throttle for the $12 million ship. It sure is exciting. You turn the throttle and you hear the whistling of the steam coming through. You sure hope you're not doing anything wrong. And it's a little frightening at first. But of course, the uh, first assistant and usually the second assistant are right there. And if I have any questions or they see me doing anything wrong, they point it right out to me. And uh, everything works uh, OK. Especially trained marine engineers, America's ships simply could not sail, could not deliver the goods. Consider the problem. It takes years of training to operate a complex modern ship. With each year, more veteran marine engineers are retiring at an earlier age. It is impossible to fill these critical jobs with the graduates of the Maritime Academy or the men up from the ranks. Recognizing this critical problem, the Marine Engineers Beneficial Association, the MEBA, entered into a unique venture of 165 of America's steamship companies, a venture to ensure the constant flow of highly skilled marine engineers to operate the American maritime vessels. Young men who are chosen come from all over the country to study at the Calhoun MEBA Engineering School in Baltimore. This two-year crash program prepares these cadets for exciting and challenging careers as marine engineers. Far more than just mastering a tough college-level classroom curriculum, the cadet engineer learns everything about a ship, right from the keel up. During this two-year program, you'll be training for careers in marine engineering profession that will bring you high salaries, world travel, and many other career benefits. During your time at school and during your year at sea, you will receive free tuition, free room and board, and also if you keep up your grades, you'll receive an educational grant of $200 per month. You will find that our technically based program is geared at the college level. There will be lab work, field trips, sea projects, and plenty of difficult classwork. It's correct. The way to look at it is that it's the part of the transistor that is common to both the input and the output of a circuit. For each transistor, there will be a transistor characteristic curve similar to this. All right, Al. On problem number six, Part D, how did you find the total work done by the elevator? All right, the first part, just about everybody got right. It was done 
finding the potential energy, and you know that potential energy is equal to the, on the bottom you have feet per second squared, so the feet cancels out with the feet squared, and you're left with feet on the top here, the tons cancel out. Second squared on the top and bottom, you get out. approximately 62.5 horsepower. And that's all there was to the problem. I think the uh, main problem was that everybody knew how to do most of the problems, but they were caught by the time limit, so that if you had studied the material more recently, instead of just assuming that you knew it, then I think everybody would have done all right. Hey, Doug, we've got page 96 for that, uh, uh, Homer physics. Uh, yeah, it was 96 to 100. Do you study museum yet? No, no, I'll get that a little bit later. It's just, it's good luck. Uh, of course, it's move like a wave in the ocean. Uh, just keep going and going. And if you, you fall off, it's, you know, that's tough. Or well, they give you plenty of chance to, to keep right on top. Like I say, they have good instructors, and the, the books are good, and the time is pretty much sufficient, and uh, you can't goof off. If you apply yourself Monday through Friday, you have Saturday and Sunday to relax and do whatever you want, and usually Monday through Friday is sufficient. But if you don't, if you want uh, four and five days off a week, you can't make it, because it, uh, while the material isn't hard, it isn't a you know, school for flunkies. You have to apply yourself. It's a profession that you're getting into. The Bethlehem Steel Corporation's Spirit Point Steel Plant has a unique capability of producing an entire ship from the keel up. When all materials are brought right in turn on our blast furnace department, refined into steel, and rolled out into plates, which will then be used for the making of the ships. I didn't know how a ship was made, or for that matter, I didn't know how steel was made. And we were given a guided tour through the uh, plant, and they showed us how the steel was made, and uh, how it was cut and rolled, and so forth, and then how the ship was actually assembled. And we went through step by step, assembling the ship, and went through various stages, and you could see the beginning and then the finished uh, product, which is very interesting. There's so much to know. And uh, I've been with the school now six months, and I feel like I've, well, I know I've learned uh, a lot of material, and uh, I know when I came to school, I didn't know anything about ships. I had never really been on a ship, been on a few rowboats, but that's about all. When I began thinking about a career and what I, what I wanted to do with my life, uh, it was uh, pretty much uncertain, as a lot of people are when they start out. And uh, I went to college and thought I wanted to be a teacher. But uh, I heard about from a few friends, I heard about the school. And I looked into that, and uh, it seemed uh, more promising than, uh, than the education I was going into. I think they need to see that. I know. It's like, they, don't, they don't use their children. Well, they have the same interest, and it's sort of fun, too. You know, I'm uh, down to eat in the cafeteria, and uh, you have a problem where you, you have a, a doubt about what one of the professors said, the teachers. And uh, you can discuss it. Everybody's learning the same thing and different ideas and, you know, you think what could be made improved upon and so forth. This is the valve down, the valve open. This is enough. Then when you turn it to the left, it closes the valve. It's not like any other valve. So you let it run and it rotates it slowly around so it doesn't bow in one spot. Uh, I think is this my system. That's it. Of course it's going to. Very ambitious. If you can hack it. Yeah, you got to try it. Part of it. Well, for another thing is that all the subjects you're learning here in the school, unlike college, you can, well, you go into a class and you learn about this and about that, and you can walk five or six blocks down to the dock and go inside a ship, and you can see what you've learned, and you... And it's, it's practical, and it's right there, whereas in college you learn something, and when you walk out of the class, that's it until the next day. In addition to the equipment that's located in the engine room, a marine engineer must also understand a tremendous amount of other equipment. Some of that equipment is located right around us. It is the winches. This is a very important piece of equipment. This is how your cargo is loaded 
aboard the ship and also off the ship. These particular winches see the power from the engine room. Well, the first time I went down to a ship uh, and looked inside and, you know, what are you kidding me? You can't learn all this. It's, it's uh, thousands of miles of pipes and pumps and five floors of all kinds of complicated machinery and uh, how are they going to teach you all this in two years? But uh, you'd be surprised. As time rolls by, like I said, if you apply yourself, it all falls out into place. This particular section from here to here pertains to your main engine operation. Normally, when they switch is in this position, the bridge... Each month you take a trip and you go down a ship, you know more, and things uh, don't seem so obscure. And, well, I, I've been here six months now, and uh, things are really falling into place now. I really can't say I'm lost when I go down an engine room. I know what's going on. You can see the actual equipment here that you've been studying for the past several weeks. This is one of the many types of vessels that you're being prepared to be an engineer on. The lube oil system is on this side. This is a little bit different from a marine turbine. Over here you have a little tank. Your pump will pick up your lube oil and send it to your various bearings. These valves here are distribution valves, distributing the amount of oil going well, you start on the outside, some case you start on the inside, but eventually you get to know the whole machine, outside and inside, what it looks on the outside and what all the various parts are on the inside. And most of the time when you go on a ship, you only see uh, the outside, and you have to imagine what's on the inside. Of course you know, but you don't actually see it. And going on various uh, field trips, uh, like Annapolis and so forth, they have a lot of these machines uh, cut away in sections, and you can look right inside. And it's no mystery. It's it's right there, what you learn. You should be familiar with the turbine end of this turbo generator from your turbines class. The reduction gearing is similar to what you've studied for your main propulsion units in many ways. Talking about the different ways of classifying turbines and the different ways they are arranged on the ships. And now you've all been down to merchant ships and you've seen the way the main propulsion unit on a typical ship is laid out, where they have an HP and an LP turbine. And now, here at Annapolis, you're getting your first chance to see a main propulsion turbine all opened up. Everything we've talked about in class is right here for you to see. On our atomizing valve is so we can maintain our two-pound pressure differential between the auxiliary exhaust and the steam that gets into our conical baffle itself. How is the conical baffle regulated? Conical baffle is regulated with the outside lever there. If we turn the wheel and open up here, we're going to maintain our two pounds different dry pipe. You see your internal feed pipe coming in on the bottom. On your recent field trip to Annapolis, they had a cutaway of a Navy type M boiler. They are a <coughs> Boiler are equipped with a separately fired superheater. If we add the superheat side in, we can control our superheat temperature. If we take it out, we have no control. Basic difference. Okay, now I have your test corrected that we took last week, and I was really amazed with the grades. Some of the top grades I've seen since I've been teaching here at the Calhoun School. And uh, keep up the good work. Here are the educational grant checks for your group. Thank you, Mr. Levine. Only those students that are successfully passing their course of studies will receive a check. Most of the students that had money deducted for failing grades have made up their work and are now receiving the full amount. Hi, guys. Anybody want to get paid? Come on. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me.
that they build confidence in young men. The way to confidence is through karate. The word karate means empty hands. It is a system of self-defense. Its purpose is to make maximum use of the body. Be sure that you do it in the middle, the back, the eyes. The way to break is one leg up right there. To the stomach. Oh! Foot kick. That's wrong. Back kick. Be sure that your back is facing him. You want to hit him with the heel of your foot. You want to break the guy up. So be sure that your back is facing him. Okay? Again. Knee 